I was checking out RoboBuilder's new Zone Runner game after watching his series building a game start to finish, and it really inspired me to make something, but I can't build anything like RoboBuilder, so I decided, hey, I'm gonna make a video on how to make this bounce pad, because that's probably the only thing I could build anything close to how he did. The links for his game along with his series are below, so be sure to check those out after this video. Because this is mainly a scripting channel, I'm gonna try to go through the building fairly quickly. All right, the first thing that you need to do is open up Roblox Studio, go to the model tab and insert a cylinder by clicking on the part, the down arrow and click on cylinder. Rotate the cylinder and then resize it. Once you have a size you like, go ahead and copy and paste it. Resize the top piece so it looks like the yellow piece. It's a little bit smaller. Change the colors of the bricks. To center the yellow piece, click on the bottom red piece, copy and paste the position into the position of the top piece. So paste the position of the bottom into the top and then do control two and you can go ahead and move that up. I made the top of yellow piece pretty thin so it looks just like the one in the row builder video. Now I'm going to click on the bottom piece and click on anchored to anchor it. I'm going to rename the bottom piece bottom and the top piece top. I'm going to go to view and click on toolbox. Go to audio and search for Boeing and insert the Boeing that is by Neo Noobs. Once you insert it, make sure you put it into replicated storage. Then go to meshes and search for star, and I just use the first one for star. You can resize, reposition, and recolor the star however you like, and you can also make your own custom star in Blender. Insert an attachment to the top, and then insert an attachment to the bottom as well. Insert a spring constraint into the bottom, as well as a prismatic constraint. Click on spring constraint and scroll down to the attachments and click on the attachment for the bottom and then the attachment for the top. Do the same for the prismatic constraint, clicking on the bottom attachment for attachment zero and then the top attachment for attachment one. Click on spring constraint again, click on visible equal to true. So check that box, grab the top and then move that up and you can resize the spring however you like. As you can see right now, it's pretty thin but if I click on spring constraint and I change the radius to something like 1.5, it looks a lot better. Scroll to the bottom of the properties for spring constraint and change dampening to 200 and then the stiffness to 5,000. The dampening will prevent the top from oscillating a lot and the stiffness will make the spring move quicker. The prismatic constraint will keep the top part only moving in the Y direction. Go back to the spring constraint and change the free length to 0.1. Next, click on the star mesh. I'm going to rename to star. I'm going to insert a weld, then click on the weld and go to part zero and make part zero the star and then part one the top. This will keep the star connected to the top for when the top is actually moving up and down as the spring moves. Click on the bottom and do control D to duplicate it and then move the bottom up slightly so that it's just above the bottom and then rename this copy of the bottom to hitbox, H-I-T-B-O-X with a capital H. Go ahead and go inside of the hitbox and delete the attachment, the prismatic constraint and the spring constraint. Go to the properties of the hitbox and change the transparency to one and then make sure the part is anchored and can collide is false. After this, you can go ahead and select the whole model and do control G to group it together. Now that we have this model, we could go ahead and insert a script into the model to script this bounce pad, but instead we're going to use the collection servers. That way we have one script that controls all of the bounce pads instead of 100 bounce pads with 100 scripts. If you haven't seen my video on the tag editor plugin, I highly suggest you check that out because we'll be using the tag editor in this video, but the tag editor is not necessary and I'll show you how to do this without it. The first thing that you wanna do if you have the tag editor plugin will be to add a new tag. So type in bounce pad and hit enter, then select your bounce pad and go ahead and tag it with a bounce pad tag. Otherwise, if you're using just the command bar, open up the command bar, click on view, click on command bar to make it show up and then type this in game.collectionservice colon add tag the model that you want to tag, and I'm actually naming this example. I'll change the name in the workspace, as you can see, to example. So I'll do workspace.example, and then in quotations, bounce pad. So we're adding a tag, it's just a string, and we can search the collection service for all objects that are tagged with the string. In this case, the tag editor is just adding the tag when we click this. 
or you could do it down in the command bar. Now go to starter player scripts and insert a local script and we can go ahead and start scripting the bounce pad. Since we're using the collection service and the tag editor plugin, we'll type in local collection service equals game colon get service and then the collection service. After that, we will need replicated storage because that is where our sound is stored. So we'll type local replicated storage equals game colon get service replicated storage. Next, we'll type in some or create some variables that we'll be using. We'll need the boing sound that we added and replicated storage. So we'll do replicated storage, wait for child, and then boing. That's because if we go to replicated storage, the name of our sound is boing. You want that to be whatever the name of your sound is. And also, if it's not in replicated storage, you'll want to put it there or change this path. Next, we're going to create a variable for the jump force. So we'll type local jump force and then we'll type in 1500. After that, we're going to create a spring length variable. So spring length is equal to five. And then we will create a variable for the local player, local, local player equals game dot players dot local player. Now we're going to create a for loop and we'll be looping through everything that's tagged with the bounce pad tag. So we'll type in for underscore comma pad in pairs in collection service get tagged bounce pad, which will return a table with everything in the game that is tagged with bounce pad. So because we tagged our bounce pad with the bounce pad tag, then this object will be showing up as pad in this script. So that means we can create some variables for the bottom, we'll type of local bottom equals pad colon wait for child and then bottom. That's because if we go to the model example is what I named it, you can see there's bottom and there's a bunch of things in the bottom that we'll be using. Uh, so we'll type that in and then after this we need the spring. So type local spring equals bottom colon wait for child and then spring constraint because that is the name of the spring inside of bottom. Now we need the hitbox, of course. So we'll type in local hitbox equals pad colon wait for child hitbox. And I didn't explain it before, I just realized, but the reason that I created that hitbox that's a little bit larger and above it, also can collide equal false, is so that the hit detection is a little bit bigger and so that the player is actually flung up into the air no matter where they are on the bounce pad. They don't really have to be on a yellow. Going back to the script, now we're going to connect to the hitbox touched event so that whenever a player touches this, they'll fly up. So we'll type in hitbox.touched, then connect to this with a function and we will be needing the part that touches it to check to see if it is a human or a player, local humanoid equals other part dot parent and then find first child, which is a humanoid. If you don't know about touch events and what I'm doing here, check out my video on touch events because I've talked about this quite a few times and explained it, but basically I'm just checking to see if a player has touched the hitbox and if so, any code inside of here will execute. Here is where we can go ahead and actually apply a force to make the player jump up. So I'll do other part, colon, apply, m pulse, and then it takes a vector three. So to type a vector three dot new, zero, and then the jump force, comma, zero. So now whenever a player touches the hitbox, then the humanoid or the player that touched it will have whatever part just shot up in the air with this force. Now if I walk over to the part and touch it, you'll see I fly up, but I actually fly up way higher than I want to. And that's because the touch event is firing too many times and we need a debounce. So debounce will keep this from firing way too many times because we're actually touching it, you know, 10, 20 times every time we touch it. So in order to do this, I'm going to set an attribute for the pad. So I'll do pad colon set attribute and then I'll do is touched is what I'll name the attribute so is touched and then I'll set this to false to start and then I'm actually going to copy this and I'll be setting it back to true down here and I'll have some wait time so I'll do a wait of 0 0.5 half a second and then I'll be setting it back to false and then of course I need to check it here so I'll do and and I'll just paste it right here, but it needs to be not. 
So basically, I also need to change this to get. So getting the attribute. So what this is going to do is when we first uh, run this script, the attribute or is touched will be set to false. And then after that, we're going to check to see if both a player is touching the part and this is not being touched. So it hasn't been touched recently. And if that is not true, it hasn't been touched recently, then this code will execute. And then of course we need to set the debounce to true. And this is just going to temporarily prevent this code from executing again. And then we can execute this code. We're gonna wait half a second before re-enabling the touched event basically and setting this to false. So if you don't know debounces, be sure to watch my touch event tutorial because I talk about them in that video. Now, in addition to just applying this impulse, we want to play the sound. So I'll type in boing sound, colon play. And then if I were to run the game with multiple people, this sound would actually be playing for everyone. So we only want the sound to play when your player touches the part. Otherwise it could be kind of annoying um, because this isn't lo like local to a certain part. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that the player is actually touching the part. So I'll go add some spaces here. I'll do and, and I'm going to check to see if other part that parent that name is equal to a local player that name. There's other ways to do this as well, but uh, that's how I'm going to do it here. So this is just going to make sure that it's your player, the player with this local script, the local player is touching this part. Otherwise, we're not going to actually do any of this. So that will mainly just prevent the annoying boing sound from being played when other people touch the part. Now, the script is almost there. When we touch this, as you can see, we're not getting flown nearly as high. It's a good level, but Nothing's happening at the bottom. It's pretty lame. We don't see the spring or anything coming up. So let's add that. So to add that, we need to change the free length of the spring. So I'm going to change the spring dot free length, with capital L equals spring length. And that will set the spring length equal to five. Then after half a second, we want to actually set it back to set it back to the 0.1 that it was before that we set it to earlier. So now you'll see when I run over here, the bottom of the, uh, rather the top is actually coming up. So it's forcing us into the air, at least it looks like that. Now if you want to add another bounce pad, all you need to do is copy and paste it. And as you can see, it's still tagged. So if you did tag the original, the copied and pasted ones will also be tagged. Um, but and now instead of having a script in here and a script in here, we have one script controlling all of them. So if you end up deciding that you want to change the spring length or the jump force, you can do it in one single uh, script rather than having to go through every single bounce pad in the game and changing all of them. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video if it helped you out and subscribe for more in the future.